Please up report. Please rise. Dallas County Commissioner's Court is now in session for the December 2011 term with the Honorable Clay Lewis Jenkins presiding. Please remain standing for the invocation. And our invocation today will be given by a guest, Commissioner Cantrell. Judge and Commissioners, we've gone inside today. I can ask you to come up. Major Stanley Pickford. He has just joined us as our new uh, CIO here in Dallas County. He has his Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics and a Master of Science in Computer. He also has a Master of Ministry. He's been very active in the ministry as an associate minister, a youth pastor, and a jail minister. Major Vick served in our United States Marine Corps. Came to get Dallas County with 35 years of IT experience and knowledge. He is married and a proud parents of three children and two grandchildren. Vic, thank you for giving our invitation. Yes, sir. Thank you, commissioners. I am Judge Dickens for this opportunity to, uh, to give the invocation. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father, we look to the hills for which come at thy help. Because all of our help comes from you, the Lord who made heaven and earth. God, when we could not help ourselves, you did. You helped us. You looked beyond our faults and you ministered our needs. And for that, we are eternally grateful when we say thank you. Thank you, God, for that eternal freedom, oh God, that you have given to us. And Father, we also thank you for the earthly freedoms that you've given to us. God, and we thank you for those men and women, oh God, who uh, stand watch over our freedoms, both those that are in uniform as well as those that are in our other security services, even those, oh God, who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. Freedoms such as the freedom of the press, the freedom of assembly, peaceful assembly, freedom, of oh God, of speech, and the freedom to elect those that represent us God, now for this court, this elected body, for Judge Jenkins, Commissioner Dickey, Commissioner Cantrell, Commissioner Price, and Commissioner Garcia, God, we ask that you bless them, keep them, and watch over them as they deliberate over the people's business. But I ask that you give them these three gifts. First, the gift of your presence, because God, with your presence, oh God, knowing that you're with them, oh God, in the difficult times as well as the good times. God, it seems like that they're having to take a stand for what is right. And take a stand, oh God, it seems like they're all alone. Let them know, God, that they may be lonely, but they're never alone. Father, you should give them the gift of wisdom, oh God, because you are the mighty God, the wonderful counselor. And God, if anyone seeks wisdom, they should always ask for you. God, that you will give them wisdom, O oh God, to discern the way that they should go and this community should go. God, we thank you, God, that even in the times of seeming the increasing needs and diminishing resources, that God, that you will give them wisdom, O oh God, so that they might know how to proceed. And Father God, we ask that you give them the gift of peace. God, when it seems like things are so chaotic, it seems like that everyone... God this doesn't know which way to go. God help them to keep their head. And to God keep calm in the midst of this storm of life. And God continue to move to that place that you would have them today. God, and as we as a community, as we see them, oh God, being encouraged and not losing hope, and God that we will follow into the bright future that you have for this community called Dallas County. God let it be so in the name of Christ Jesus. We humbly and sincerely pray. Servant prayer. Amen. Amen. Texas, she attended Skyline High School and University of Texas at Harvard. She 
She's a faithful member of Supremeville Adventist Church Christ. She's the daughter of Carolyn Young. She's been married to Daryl Robinson for 24 years. She enjoys reading, learning to lose, attending plays and concerts, traveling, and spending time with family and friends. She's a certified juvenile probation officer with the Texas Juvenile Probation Commission since 1988. And her career is focused on supervising special needs caseload of juvenile offenders. And I'll read the resolution and move its adoption. Whereas the Dallas County Mission Court takes special notice when an individual is given long and faithful service to Dallas County. And whereas Michelle Robinson began her Dallas County career on October 27, 1986, in the Dallas County Juvenile Department as group worker. And whereas Michelle has continuously served in the juvenile department in positions with increasing responsibilities, including juvenile probation officer at the Day Activity Center and juvenile probation officer in the Field Probation Unit District 3, where she currently serves. And whereas Michelle has served Dallas County continuously and diligently for 25 years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court is hereby recognized and extend sincere appreciation to Michelle Robinson for 25 years of faithful service and further express the best wishes for her continued success in future years of service to Dallas County. And I so Second. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. What I would like to say about Ms. Robinson is once you meet her and hear her and listen to her, you will feel her spirit and her dedication to the youth we serve. And it's a testimony to her staff and her friends and her co-workers who are here to pay tribute to her. She's wonderful. And even in her article that she wrote, she talked about her mom and her husband. And so this is the epitome of a probation officer for the probation department, and we are honored to recognize Ms. Robinson. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. First and foremost, I want to give honor and reverence to God. I continue to believe that is, the scripture is correct. It is in him that we move and we have our very being. I like to thank the Dallas County Commissioner's Court for this recognition this morning. And I want you to express to you all that I stay here in open humility. I also would like to <coughs> thank uh, and recognize the Dr. Terry Smith, the director of the Dallas County Juvenile Department, along with the assistant director, Mr. John Key, and the rest of the administrative <coughs> body. I want to uh, pay my respect to all my coworkers of District 3, my supervisor, Michelle Minahan, and assistant supervisor, Dolores Gill. We work together as a team. And there are so many people that I want to say thank you to my fellow uh, co-workers throughout the juvenile department that have been there on this journey with me for all these years. I consider you not just co-workers, but friends, and even to a certain extent, family. Last but not least, I want to say thank you to my mom. Uh, everything that I am today, I owe to her. I also want to uh, thank my dad who couldn't be here today. My mother, my name is Carol Young, my dad, Alonzo Young. I also want to thank my lifetime partner of 24 years, my husband, Daryl Robinson, who's here. And when I need to be, I go home and he is the same. <laughs> uh, the profession of a juvenile probation officer, in my opinion, is a life of, of service to others. It's a pouring out of yourself. Uh, and you're doing whatever you can to impact empowerment for positive change. And you're also trying to balance, it's like a dual responsibility to protect the community from victimization. I just want to challenge all my coworkers and everybody that has ever worked with a, a young individual to keep up the good work. I want to close with, with borrowing some words from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The first question that the priest and Levi asked, if we help this man, what will happen to us? The Samaritan came along and reversed the question and said, if we don't help this man, what will happen to him? Thank you.
it will be presented at a later time, but she has 25 years of faithful service at the Dallas County in the uh, CSCD. And uh, I'll move this back. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Our next two resolutions are for Commissioner Price. I didn't follow that, Judge. But anyway, the uh, Juvenile Mental Health Court, uh, Dr. Smith, Mr. Heath, the uh, Juvenile Department. Uh, also, Judge, uh, yeah, also, Judge, how are you? Got the whole group. Whereas more than 1.2 million children in our state have a diagnosable mental health disorder. Whereas one in five children has a mental illness, and of these, one in 10 of these children have a serious mental illness. Even more alarming is that 70% of the youth in the juvenile justice system potentially suffer from a mental health disorder. This is not surprising given that Texas ranks 49th in the nation in mental health funding per person. And whereas the Juvenile Mental Health Court in Dallas will provide additional screening tools to help identify those youth with mental illness early on and determine if they are eligible for and can benefit from the court's community-based programs instead of out-of-home placement or detention. And whereas Dallas is only the fifth juvenile mental health court in the state of Texas, where the mental health court is a special docket that provides an effective alternative to detention for low-risk juvenile offenders with mental illness. The previous four counties with the juvenile mental health court saw a significant reduction in repeat offenses among participants in their program. And whereas Dallas County Juvenile Probation Department embarked on their first diversionary juvenile mental health court on July 19, 2011. And where the court's goal is to provide children and youth with effective mental health treatment and services in the community instead of placing them in more expensive, potentially less effective detention facilities. And whereas in 2009, the average cost of keeping a youth in our special needs unit at home with community service was $13.67 per day compared to $127 per day for having a youth in the detention facility for treatment. And where the juvenile probation saved Dallas County approximately $133,350 by just having seven youth complete mental health court in their community rather than placing these youth in a treatment facility. Whereas the participants in the juvenile mental health court all have mental health diagnosis, they receive close supervision by probation officers that include weekly home and school monitoring and assistance. They also receive functional family therapy through a juvenile department and monthly medication monitoring by Dr. Patricia Newton at MetroCare. And whereas these participants are also matched with mentors from Big Brothers and Big Sisters program. And whereas the mental health court is presided over by Associate Judge Robin Herrera and at any time is given as many as 12 youth who are participating. The members of the court include an assistant district attorney, two probation officers, a psychiatrist, a liaison from Big Brothers Big Sisters program and counselors with the Family Functional Therapy program, all services provided for the treatment of juveniles and their families, the mental health court, at no cost to the county. And whereas Metro Care and Big Brothers and Big Sisters offer their services as well as the juvenile probation department reallocating staff for caseworkers and family uh, functional therapy that the district attorney's office also assigned the staff to work with those you recommended for mental health court. And whereas the mental health court is to guide and nurture these youth with mental health needs 
to a point of accomplishment that they may not otherwise have succeeded. The graduation represents not only a milestone in the lives of these children, but in the mission of several providers who are committed to ensuring the youth in Dallas County are receiving the best services available to allow them to succeed. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court does hereby recognize, congratulate, and commend the Juvenile Probation Department for establishing a Juvenile Mental Health Court for the youth and their families in Dallas County. And I so move. Second. All those in favor. All right. Mr. Uh, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, thank you for being here. If you look at everyone that is standing, not behind me, but with me, this is what it took to create a juvenile mental health court. We are so grateful that we have lots of community partners, lots of community support. We're focused on one thing, putting needs first. Um, we had the DA's office, of course, Judge Robert Herrera, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves from Carol Johnson to Dr. A. It really did take an effort, and we did it without um, expanding our budget. They willingly chipped in. Um, they, they allocated their resources. Grand Hill and his staff were very, very um, instrumental in making sure that we had someone there representing their concerns with providing safety for the public as well as making sure we were putting correct services in place for juveniles. It was a wonderful thing. It came together um, rapidly. I remember Judge Jenkins saying, when can we make that happen? Because it was looking at saving money. But not only is money the factor, the factor is doing what's right by juveniles in Dallas County. And this is a good thing for juveniles. As a second part of this, hopefully if you're able to attend, we have our first graduation this evening at 5 p.m. at Henry Wade. Um, so we're hoping that, that the media can come out and support um, the efforts that we've made here in collaboration with a strong partnership. And I'm going to let everyone kind of introduce themselves. I'm Robert Herrera, and the truth is I'm the one who's been blessed by being involved in this court. And what we have learned is that every child has promise. Every child has potential. We're meeting them at the time of their greatest need, hand to hand, heart to heart. And it is our commitment to make sure that, that they reach all of their goals and all of their dreams. And uh, we have the best staff and the best team. I cannot say enough about them. And all children, they're just like living clay. And as the responsible adults in this community, it's our responsibility to make sure that we help mold and shape them to become model citizens, which they can be. And it's been my honor and my privilege to be a tiny, tiny part of that. The work is with the staff. Judge Robert Thank you, Thank you, Judge Robert Herrera. Thank you, Judge Jenkins. Thank you, Judge I saw the kids in the courtroom and there was a lot of encouragement and mentoring of our youth, which was really nice. <coughs> uh, my name is Diane Lloyd and I played a real small part. I'm the supervisor of the mental health court. Good morning. Uh, my name is Stephanie McVeigh and I um, supervise the Constant Family Therapy Program. And I have to say that in a uh, just about my 20-year career working with you, this is honestly the first time that I've worked with a team, a comprehensive team. We really sincerely collaborated to, uh, in the best interest of the youth. So it's really been an honor uh, to work with these youth and the staff. And also, you know, mental health is one of those things that oftentimes is overlooked uh, because sometimes it just doesn't look like mental health to some people. But honestly, I can say that these youth in this program, they have sincerely benefited the opportunity to participate in this program. So we're, I'm definitely honored to uh, be a part of this team. Good morning, I'm Brian Hill. I work for the Dallas County District Attorney's Office, and I would echo all of the previous comments and the essence of that. It is definitely a pleasure to work with uh, such a wonderful group of us. Everybody's modest. The doctor didn't introduce herself. He is the chief. <coughs> And 
my name is Gerardo Jones. I'm also well, the other coordination officer that's on the team. Uh, the need is there, and I would definitely, since it does save, save the county uh, funds, I definitely would like to see this program expanded. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Carol Johnson with the Department of Sisters. It has been a huge honor to work with this team um, who has a heart and passion for these kids. It's been an incredible to come every week and be a part of their lives. And Big Brothers Big Sisters hopes to uh, keep them even more involved in mentoring with you um, in the Dallas County Duke business.
Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Janine Mercy, please uh, come forward. For those of you who've never been uh, blessed by having Janine Mercy build you a world championship. Uh, <laughs> the oh, wait, we're all from Dallas. <laughs> there isn't anybody. Oh. But, but here's it the resolution uh, uh, reads as follows. And I docked it on a little bit. It's more <laughs> Whereas the Dallas Mavericks organization was established in 1980 bringing the first NBA franchise to Dallas County. And whereas in just four seasons the Mavericks reached the playoffs in 1984 winning the best of five series against the Seattle Supersonics. The team continued to experience success in the regular and postseasons for the next several years, endearing themselves to local fans and supporters. And whereas after 20 years of basketball and a then outdated reunion arena, the Dallas Mavericks expressed a strong desire to remain in Dallas County, specifically the city of Dallas, and asked residents to affirm their support of the team to the new arena in downtown. The voters agreed, and the American Airlines Center was built on an empty industrial lot revitalizing the area, providing a much needed boost in Dallas. The Warriors and Mavs rewarded the voters with improved play on the court and became a force to be reckoned with in the NBA, posting consecutive winning seasons and playoffs appearances, including the Western Conference title in 2006. After a heartbreaking loss um, in the NBA Finals in 2006 to Miami, in which Dwayne Wade could not dribble without the refs calling a foul, the Mavs in front of the would rebound and regroup. And Whereas during the 2010 2011 season, the Mavericks fulfilled that promise by providing thrilling games in each series victory with multiple conquer behind wins over the Portland Trailblazers, Blazers, defending NBA champions, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, enjoy your retirement, uh, Phil Jackson, and the Oklahoma uh, City Thunder, Duran, get a Sunday, but not, not last year, not this year, uh, uh, to win their second. Uh, Western Conference title, and finally, a long-coveted NBA final championship in six games over, Miami, over the Miami Heat, becoming the king of all sports. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court, I mean, I figure, hey, you know I've got the power to do this, but let's make y'all the king, right? Fair enough. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the NBA team in Dallas Mavericks on their exciting victory. And thanks to the team for remaining in the county seat where, where we can continue to serve as a vital economic stimulus and a favorite pastime of basketball fans in our region and around the world, proving that good things do come to those who wait and those who play better. Now, therefore, the Dallas County Commissioner's Court is hereby proclaimed the Dallas Mavericks King of All Sports for 2011. Raise the banner, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All of them favor. I've seen this happen since Hector was <laughs> So, Steve, tell us how you know well, First of all, before, before I say anything about the Mavericks, I want to uh, congratulate you folks for what you're doing. I'm a child of Watts and Compton, uh, in South Central Los Angeles. So, anytime I'm in the present system, I can thank your lives. Uh, the ones that help the young people always feel humble and honored. So, thank you for all the great work uh, that you guys are doing on behalf of those that uh, are the best fortunate than others. With regards to the matters, uh, just a little bit. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to comment on the uh, Dwayne Wade issue of 2006 because I don't want to get fined by the commissioner. Uh, what I will say is I've been president and CEO of Maddox for uh, going on 15 years now, and uh, all I can tell you is there's, there's nothing that we've achieved that we could not have done without the support uh, of the city. The citizens of the city have been great and supportive. Uh, this court has been supported. We, we put on the biggest all-star event, the biggest basketball event in the history of the world in 2010. Uh, we needed permits, we needed permission, we needed a lot of things from the court. Every time we came to this body, uh, they were gracious enough to, uh, to work with us and to help us get down what we needed to get down along with the city. So on behalf of Mark Cuban and uh, Coach Carlisle, uh, who is busy right now trying to put together the team and, and get ready for this season, uh, and our staff, uh, Donnie Nelson, all of us, I want to say thank you so much, a heartfelt thank you for all that you do for us. We are going to tee it up again on ABC uh, on Christmas Day. We're going to raise the banner, raise uh, the banner. <laughs> in front of a national television audience, and our goal is singular, that is to do it again uh, same time next year. So thank you. From the judge talk, I think 
you will, a bad debt and economic stimulus. I want to make sure that the record is real clear that we differentiate between what happened uh, with the Mavericks and with uh, another team that didn't understand. It, it was the numbers. It was the numbers. Uh, you came to the city and uh, you uh, asked for a, a loan in the form of a TIF. That TIF not only uh, has been paid back, but it's been paid in the fastest TIF in the history of this city and was paid back before time. And so that money that we loaned you to, to be an economic engine in this community paid dividends. And I only say that in light of the fact that we had another proposal on the table uh, for, for about $400 million. Well, it's really $600 million. And uh, they needed $400 million. We just had to sit down and make the numbers work. And the numbers just did not work. Uh, they work they work for, uh, for the Mavericks organization. And so we just want to say thank you. And even though I want to remind my colleague, uh, every vote counts. Uh, it only passed by 1,000. 643 votes. <laughs> 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 I'll never get that number. Oh, yeah, we got 643. Thank you very much, Mr. Charles, for all you do for not only the Mavericks organization, but for what you do as a, for, in this community. Thank you. A lot of basketball courts and Dr. Smith, our new basketball courts at the juvenile department. What's that? The Mavericks organization. That's nice. That's okay. I want to thank you and thank you for sporting the t shirt this morning. We appreciate it. Yeah, raise the band. Uh, we expect to see you Christmas Day. He's going to have it. He's going to have it. I'll be willing to work the game for you. We're looking for point guard, so you have a shot. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. Committed volunteer.
here, having traveled to Atiku, Ghana, to build water wells, and New Orleans, Louisiana, to assist victims in the aftermath of, of Katrina. He is a tutor at Dallas Christian and works with the local special living. After graduation, Garrett plans to attend college and pursue a career in medicine or law. Now, in law. <laughs> now, therefore, be, be it resolved that the Dallas County Commissioner's Court does hereby congratulate Garrett Adcock on being named as a Wendy's High School Heisman finalist and offers our best wishes for a successful future. He named his parents, teachers, grandparents, and others by laying a strong academic spiritual and socially conscious foundation for the sustaining young man who serves as a role model for others. And I'm going to give it to Dr. Sanders. Soon, we take it over, soon. 
Oh, well, we, we're uh, yeah, honored to have uh, you here, and, and I got a, a, a resolution uh, honoring that their outstanding service. Uh, of all of our chambers of commerce, we have you know, many, many chambers of commerce. We don't have any chamber of commerce that does a better job of fostering these sister relationships um, uh, across, across the ocean uh, that brings business and, and understanding uh, to, our, to our area. And nobody does a better job of that than the Italian Chamber of Commerce of uh, uh, North Texas. And I uh, want to honor those folks today. And so the resolution reads as follows. Whereas Dallas County is rich in ethnic and cultural diversity, and our community would not be complete without the many contributions and accomplishments of the Taiwanese community. And whereas in 1992, a group of business owners who had either migrated to the DFW area from Taiwan or had long standing relationships with businesses in Taiwan organized the Taiwanese Chamber of Commerce in DFW. Whereas with a membership of over 200 local businesses, the Taiwanese Chamber of Commerce actively participates in, in the Chinese and Asian communities of North Texas, reaching out to educate local businesses, government entities, and organizations about the work of their chamber. Here's Dr. Kua, sir, the president of the Taiwanese Chamber of Commerce, DFW, chairman of the Sister City Committee of the Taiwanese Chamber, and event chair of the Chinese New Year Celebration. And under his leadership, the Taiwanese Chamber of Commerce and DFW have established many sister relationships throughout the United States. Whereas, so, and not just Dallas County, but throughout the whole metropolitan. Uh, whereas several years ago, the Dallas Taiwanese Chamber of Commerce Dr. Ku approached Dallas County recommending the establishment of a joint relationship with Dallas County and Taiyun County, the Republic of China, Taiwan, and so was formed a sister county partnership. Whereas the co cooperative relationship between Dallas County and Taiyun County provides the opportunity for friendly relationships on the basis of quality and reciprocity, and encourages economic development and cultural understanding. Whereas, through the dedication and hard work of Dr. Q and the Taiwanese Chamber, and their willingness to facilitate visits for elected officials from Dallas County and Taiyun County, they have been able to strengthen and cement the relationship between the two entities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Dallas County Commissioner's Court is here by commanding <coughs> Charles Q, the Taiwanese Chamber of Commerce, for the diligent work in establishing the cooperative relationship between Dallas County and Taiyun County, especially with the local Taiwanese. Uh, for its adoption. Right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank you very much, Judge and members of the Commission. <coughs> we uh, hope that uh, the relationship between Taiwan County and Dallas County will bring a lot of business, economic development and, uh, into this area. <coughs> so, and I want to make sure that you all. Our incoming president, Mr. Kai Trump, here with us. You want to say the word? By the way, if y'all want a good hamburger in this area, <laughs> y'all need to roll down Fort Worth Avenue to Kai's Dairy Queen. That's right. The best uh, belt busters in Texas, right? <laughs> <laughs> and again, thanks a lot for the honor. And then we brought our uh, community reporter, so can we take a picture with y'all? Absolutely. And, and, and you, you talked about, about economic development. If we are successful in economic development, and guys, for those of you out there that don't know, uh, this is it's a it's a big deal, these relationships. We just got through sending our airport, uh, our chairman of the board of the FAA airport, to go to the chairman of the board of Taiwan County Transport. If, if we're successful, and this is long term, but we've got more cargo flights coming in from Viva Air than the Chinese uh, airline. That's millions of dollars into our, our, our hundreds of millions of dollars into our local economy. If we can get a direct flight uh, from them over the next five years, that's $250 million uh, for North Texas and economic impact. I've been, uh, Carl uh, Z from Dallas has been, I think we just had Gary Thomas from Dark Bell speak to a company that is based out of, of Taiwan. Uh, we're on the finalist list, can't say they are yet, but Humans, but can't see there, I guess, now loud, but it, that looks very positive, and that is also because of the tremendous work of the, of the Taiwanese Chamber and, and the work that you do in those relationships. It's a, it's a big deal for our, for our taxpayers, the, the uh, economic development that you're creating to foster these relationships. 
and uh, motion on the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor, appreciate it. Thank you, got Adam Mann. Uh, one of these items is tied in, so I'm going to ask for the boys to please show them. Thank you, sir. We have three items. We're trying to be Cedar Crest, Oak Cliff, and Pleasant Grove. 
And I know that there's a lot of people involved in these kind of programs, but as a member of the Salvation Army the directors, I, you know, get interested every day more and more in everything they do to help other organizations as well. So I'm glad that we're having this in front of us, Judge, and uh, we'd like to make those comments. That's it. Can I add, yes, and surely it says voting uh, no on uh, number 14, uh, because of the fraud process. Uh, this is the appointment of Patrice Ellis Kirk to the uh, MPTO, and I want to say that I have the greatest respect for her. I simply account, I, I am uh, registering a no vote because uh, of the process. <laughs> I did, this is a, this is a statutorily uh, uh, constructed board of the MTPA and it has two uh, appointments from Dallas County. These are joint appointments by the Commissioner's Court. I did not learn of this appointment until I read it in the Dallas Morning News. Uh, this is a case of decisions being made behind closed doors. Uh, every Commissioner should have a chance to know about this uh, prior to it being put on the court agenda. And for that simple reason, I am voting to know. Well, let me just let the record be real clear. The law is very clear that the, that the state legislature, because of what traditionally has happened in this county and other <coughs> counties that are point to this board, they have not seen the kind of diversity either by gender or race represented on that board. Therefore, the legislature took and did a process whereby there is a northern appointment and a southern appointment. And therefore, people from the south get a chance to make an appointment to this board. Uh, unfortunately, the only diversity in the history of this organization since 1953 has come from the southern sector. Uh, we need no affirmation. It took us at least since the resignation had come from a prior court's appointment that did not represent that diversity. Uh, we set about the, uh, the task of vetting individuals for that position. We did not need an affirmation. Therefore, once we had someone who agreed to serve, uh, we moved forward. And as such, uh, Matrice Ellis Kirk will represent the first African American female in the history of that organization to serve. And she will represent only the second African American with diversity in the history of that organization. So therefore, I didn't see an appointment coming from the North, no reflection on my colleagues from the North, but we will prove, uh, move forward. And I uh, would reply to that, that that Commissioner Price's comment is off point. Uh, the fact that uh, we do traditionally, uh, not by legislation, but we do traditionally have someone from the North and South uh, is certainly a good policy. I'm talking about the fact that I wasn't informed of this policy. And please remember that the constituents in District 1, the district which elected me, are the main users of the North Texas toll road. So at least as a representative of that district, I should be, uh, have a chance to know ahead of time and to have discussion about who, or whatever the race. Uh, this, that's not the issue. That is the I issue. Should have only for you, Mr. It Mr. is. You're right. This is, uh, but the, that every member of the court should at least have a chance to know and discuss who is appointed. And uh, certainly I agree uh, very much with diversity. Uh, but again, I can tell by your staff. Well, I'm not going to get into that comment. I've, I've stated my point. I think you did. All right, any other comments? Call the question. And, and uh, as, as to uh, Ms. Ellis Kirk, uh, let me say I, I have now spoken to her about um, NCTA issues for approximately three hours. Uh, she's, she's fully digested the Alvarez and Marcel report. Her background comes um, from board service on a variety of, of both public and private sector boards, and she has uh, experience being in, uh, in auditing and, and accounting and, and finance departments of DART. Um, one of the things that the Alvarez and Marcel report saw was that we had a lack of diversity 
prior board mm. on gender and racial diversity, and also that we had a blend and uh, lack of, of knowledge on, on bond finance. Uh, we had some business people who had financial knowledge as business owners, but we didn't have the emphasis <coughs> of public finance on our prior board. And so uh, we served high and low with the help of many business leaders, including uh, Trudima Ursary, who was here in court today, who's very helpful in the search. Judge, do you understand that every member of this court should at least Sir. know ahead of time about a joint appointment? And that is the only point that I'm making today. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not speaking to your point. I'm speaking uh, in thanks to Matrice Kirk, who is a, a busy person, who's the managing partner of a large, uh, I think the largest in the world, actually, a search firm for diversity, diversity on boards, and has agreed to serve on this important um, board. Uh, finally, <coughs> This four-county uh, um, review of the NTTA, uh, which is, encompasses 20 commissioners, four county judges, uh, let's see, 17 of whom are Republicans, three of whom are Democrats, um, is a bipartisan or nonpartisan uh, function. Our eyes at NTTA are on the prize of serving those workers, those people that are using uh, the road, and the truce is going there to do nothing but work for those ratepayers and build a more transparent and more efficient um, NTTA. And I thank her uh, for her service on, on uh, that board and will enthusiastically uh, vote uh, to put her on the line. I think she has experience, she has the knowledge, and she will be a great asset. <coughs> I think she will take the board as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just hope we have a more transparent process. This is very transparent. Uh, and and uh, with that, I will call. Uh, call the question. All those in favor of court orders 10 through 60? Aye. Uh, uh, and show a Show the commissioner. Uh, Dickie is the example. Do I have a moment? Do you feel the legislation? Do you feel the legislation at that point? I feel the legislation. Uh, 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 all right. Next we have our, our uh, briefing session. Mr. Martin, can you please take us through? Well, Judge Commissioner, I know the one who's reaching agenda, uh, health and human services, recommends approval of the Department of State <coughs> HIV surveillance, for <coughs> incident specialist processing for the period January 1 through December 31st, 2012. I have two sheriffs of the Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, how, many, how many tests would you wind up doing with regards to HIV uh, in the past couple of weeks? The, uh, the event on uh, this past weekend, one that we did over 800 tests at the actual event, so we should be close to our target of 1,500. Uh, uh, that was our target number. You already done about 1,000. Right, so we should be well over our expected number. Uh, one of the good things about it is that we were able uh, to get a large number of that target age group, which is 13 to 24. And then on uh, Sunday, we were able to see a lot of uh, our, our mature adults who uh, may be uh, getting back out into the dating circuit. So the concept is we were able to get all the elements of testing. So we think we're very, very successful. Uh, I think Mr. Garcia came through and took a photo. Uh, and he said, yep, yeah. so uh, we were very successful in doing this. 800 total. And, yeah, we just had close to 800 on that weekend for those two. But 1,800 we total when we collect all of our numbers. We're still gathering our numbers. So just for those two days, that significant 800 tests uh, that were well, that's more than yeah. That's pretty time. much yeah. That's pretty much a record that uh, it's going to be probably quite a beat uh, going in the next year. And not just the test. I was there at five o'clock on uh, Sunday. I stopped by to see the <coughs> providers. They had given 141 flu shots yeah. uh, that day. Right. And, and one of the things county employees about flu shots. I saw one of Craig's uh, prosecutors out there. And so uh, I guess you're not going to leave Dominique that is running for judge. And she hadn't had her flu shot. There were two other people there who I knew who hadn't had their flu shot. Flu shots are free, y'all. We give them free flu shots. You know. um, so get your flu shot because you know you don't want to get your family sick. You don't want to get your coworkers sick. You can't be free. Um, we, we we all need to, to uh, uh, take advantage of that. So if anybody here, I, I'm going to make you raise your hand if you had another flu shot. You too, reporters. We don't want you guys getting sick either. Get that free. Get, get the free flu shots. But they're available, what, 8 to 5? 8 to 5, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, free, um, and at all our clinics, and they've like, been coming in slowly, but uh, but we're glad to have everybody come in. I also want to mention our meningitis, low-cost vaccine. We did run out. We're expecting a, a second shipment, uh, but the, uh, we got the order on last Tuesday. We ran out by the <coughs> uh, so we're expecting a new shipment in uh, this week. And 
we were the first one. We're the first one in uh, the state, and we'll probably be the first one to get the second shipment. Well. And because now this is the law, we're going to have the cost at 150. Well, 150 is our cost, but the low cost vaccine is 10 dollars, and we're really encouraging everybody to come now because once that vaccine, uh, the state doesn't may not be shipping out okay. anymore after the first of the year. So the 10 dollar cost is what we're trying to get the college students to come in now at the low low cost vaccine, but once we're out of that, we would only have the hundred and fifty dollar doses that we get through Dallas County kind of purchasing the process. It's time to do it now. Yeah. And I just want to make one last comment. I have the opportunity to be at one service last uh, weekend and Commissioner Price, it was a fantastic event. I had the opportunity to go to all the health services to uh, Dallas Health and Human Services Department. But more important, the other partners, you have a lot of partners there that uh, were doing a fantastic job. Among them, I had the opportunity to see that um, community dental care uh, was doing you know, all the dental exams, and it was a comprehensive health program all the way around. So congratulations. I wasn't able to see the survey at the time I left about, you know, one Well, we think we had close to about almost 50,000 people come to the event. But a lot of people came specifically for the health screening. We had from kidneys to diabetes to depression, uh, you name it. It, it, it was there, so that has become so that it, it has become the annual testing for a lot of people, a lot of screens. And so I appreciate all the support. I have two sheriff's department headquarters on the corner agenda. I have three operations engineering project management recommends approval of adjusted parking rates for all parking lots and conversion to Frank Crowley Lot B to a public parking lot. Thanks for the uh, explanation. I uh, was concerned uh, <clears throat> in regards to why employees over at George Allen and Founders was uh, giving people a little different than the ones over at uh, uh, D and, and, <clears throat> and, and Crowley. And a uh, good explanation. Uh, and I just want to thank staff because what that means is staff monitors, they monitor the surface lots, they adjust, and of course, that parking lot we built it, we built it with uh, the revenue bonds, and so we got a little different challenge that to do with the, uh, with the uh, crowd lot. So good explanation. You know, you got a, you got a response at about four o'clock this morning. Four thirty in the morning. Okay, this morning. Somebody was waking up. Somebody else was going to see that. <laughs> and you just want to make sure that and you try to emphasize this. Is, is that these are public rates, these are no impact employee rates. Correct. Right. Right. right, no, I understand. But uh, when I look at them, I saw the difference in the employee rates, uh, given where we've been with compensation, I want to make sure the employee rates uh, were, were at least somewhat, somewhat, but somewhat equitable. And I appreciate the Sheriff's Department, the and everybody else who's getting ready to give up Lot B in the next couple of weeks. Uh, that's going to be to the bottom line. Uh, uh, Real dollar for Dallas County. All we got to do is walk off the street. I do. I do want to challenge staff, though. We got to figure out how we're going to get people across the street in regards to the city of Dallas and that, uh, that light. Uh, because if you don't know that park in that lot, uh, that light does not let you cross that street. So uh, we, we, we got. To, yeah, thank you. We got, we got to, the light. The light at the corner of River River Front. And commerce, uh, when you look at it, it has a turn, the, the, the traffic check, but it has pedestrian wise, and the sheriff and I, we, we've all tried to make that walk. You, you, when you leave that corner, you better be running. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that, that's when everybody just cuts right across from the middle of it. And, and of course, DPD, that's dangerous too, uh, with all the construction that's going on on Riverside. So we, we just got we just got to figure out how, you know, how we're going to do that because what we're doing we're basically moving at least at least a hundred park uh, eighty is eighty across the street and uh, so that's a conversation with the city. Okay. okay, so you are ready for this? Yeah, we'll, we will talk with them later. Okay. Okay. okay, well let's let's go ahead and do that. We're yes. going to have to have them. Great, thank you. All right. I have four fire marshal recommended Dallas. Let me make sure I'll tell you guys too, because that's 
$807,000 off this year's budget without any impact um, to raising our employees by, by going to market rates um, on these lots that we charge them to other people. Uh, and that's, that's a good job. You know, we're going to find a way to balance the budget. We're going to do it without raising taxes. And we're going to find some way to, uh, I hope we find some way to put money in the pockets of the people who haven't seen the pay raise. You know, a real, a real in their pocket pay raise. So it's because of things like that that y'all are doing that we're getting closer to that goal. So appreciate the hard work of staff and the hard work of everybody out there in bringing these budgets back yet again another year to try to you know, survive this recession and, and uh, you know, keep providing services. Thank you. I have four fire marshal working with the Dallas County Commission to lift the outdoor burn ban in place in effect on September 27, 2011. Item 5, I, I have that item is pulled. Item 6, Public Works, recommends approval for the local agreement with the City of Mesquite for the reconstruction of Gus Thomason Road within the State 30 to Oaks Drive. Item 7, is that still in? State recommends not renewing the contract with Phoenix House and allocating Jura funds in this year 2012 to a new program through a competitive RFP process in addition to the funds set aside for specific services such as GED testing, medical expenses, and youth clothing as discussed in the briefing. And if you want to add to that an additional $3,000 to lead top for the Christmas gifts for the program residents. And I want to pull that and, and uh, visit with uh, juvenile services about that, about it looks like it. Phoenix House was not approved anywhere. Right? You're going to RFP. You're going to RFP. This is yeah, it's all on the on right. right. So I want to deal with that relationship and fix whatever the problem is with that relationship. It's gone. It wouldn't be. Well, I know that I work at Alice. 
as former president of the Washington Board. <coughs> I know they'll work it out very peacefully because it, it is now, so it isn't wonderful. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're going to do another RFP that's for this review board, and, and hopefully with the corrections we made, if they read it, we will look at that like it is. We thought of the new cities, but it's not far. This is a bed on the street. If you want to go with them, they want to do something different, something new, or you must find out. Yeah. If there's a bed on the street, I want to follow our, our ethics policy. I want to make sure that we're not having meetings with them. Um, to the extent that we can, though, I want to get the, the main decision makers there and, and our department in a room together and, and uh, work out what's going on. I like purchasing that quote was on your formal agenda. I have nine budget. You have your conference travel training request. You have B hire for succession to county clerk, district clerk, JP 313312, Sheriff's Office and Health and Human Services. And item nine, you see that quote was on your formal agenda. And judge, if there are no questions, that concludes the briefing agenda and you have no speakers listed. Kind of jumps for some speakers. How about y'all? <laughs> Anybody want to come up and say anything? <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Last time you did that, that was like a five day tour. Oh, all right. And so with that, uh, we're going to go into our, our, uh, our closed session. Of, uh, of the term is going to closed session as authorized by Chapter 551 of the Government Code. Anything that is uh, Parts of the closed session will be dealt with at a uh, subsequent public session. So if nobody, I know Kevin will probably stick around because he's the only one who sticks around for us coming out. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, yeah, he has nothing to do with that, but they'll learn it. Um, so whoever is here that we won't see until after the holidays, y'all have a, a, a blessed holiday and, and thanks for being uh, part of a successful year. We're adjourned. Thank you.